In a lifetime comprising a mere 32 years, Bruce Lee revolutionized the world of martial arts through his profound teachings and philosophy, and created a legacy through his work in motion pictures that has evolved into a legend. Thought by many to be the greatest martial artist of the 20th century, Bruce Lee was born in San Francisco on November the 27th, 1940, between 6 a.m. and 8 a.m. at the Jackson Street Hospital, under the birth name of Lee Jun Fan. Courtesy of his thespian father, young Bruce made his stage debut at the tender age of three months, playing the role of a female baby. His father, Lee Hoi Chun, a prestigious member of the Cantonese Opera Company, would carry his young son on stage each night during his performance of Golden Gate Girl. In 1941, when Bruce was only one year old, he returned with his parents to the family home in Kowloon, Hong Kong. The modest second-story apartment at 218 Nathan Road would be Bruce's home for most of his formative years. By age six, Bruce had already begun to develop the charisma and confidence that would later make him a star. And he appeared in his first major childhood movie, The Beginning of a Boy, in 1946. Later in the same year, Bruce performed in The Birth of Mankind and My Son Archun, and went on to make over 20 movies before commencing his studies at La Salle College in 1952. 1953 was a pivotal year in the life of Bruce Lee. After losing a street fight with a local gang, Bruce began to train in the art of Wing Chun under famed Sifu Yip Man. His natural speed and timing and acute mental focus guaranteed that Bruce would excel in this complex and exacting art. In fact, his precocious talent developed so quickly that despite numerous other encounters with street gangs, Bruce would never again lose a fight. As well as indulging his passion for the martial arts, Bruce also began taking cha-cha lessons in 1954 at age 14. The dance was popular amongst local teenagers at the time, and Bruce not only went on to win the Crown Colony Cha-Cha Championship in 1958, but also broke the hearts of many local girls. As well as his achievements on the dance floor, 58 was also notable as the year when Bruce defeated reigning three-year champion Gary Elms in the Hong Kong Boxing Championships, putting to practical use the combat theory he had devised with Sifu Yip Man. Like many Hong Kong teenagers of the time, Bruce became caught up in the turf wars which surrounded the illicit activities of the local street gangs. Participating in numerous street fighting incidents, Bruce soon came to the attention of the police. Terrified that their son would forever become embroiled in a life of crime, Bruce's mother and father decided that he should visit San Francisco, the place of his birth, to claim his American citizenship and finish his education. With only $15 from his father and $100 from his mother, Bruce arrived in the United States in 1959 and stayed by prior arrangement with an old friend of his father. By carrying out odd jobs around the Chinese communities in the San Francisco Bay Area, Bruce earned just enough money to secure his independence within a few months and relocated to Seattle to begin work as a waiter in Ruby Chow's famous Chinatown restaurant. Mindful of the promise he had made to his parents, Bruce enrolled at the Edison Technical School and through diligent study and application, earned his high school diploma, while supplementing his income from the restaurant by teaching martial arts to local residents in backyards and city parks. By the time Bruce had reached the age of 21 in 1961, his skill in the martial arts was astounding both in terms of physical application and his understanding of the philosophical evolution, which shaped its development as both a combat medium and art form. In March of the same year, Bruce matriculated and went on to the University of Washington to study philosophy. Very soon, knowledge of his incredible skill spread to the other students, and Bruce once again fulfilled the role of both teacher and mentor to many of his classmates. After a romance lasting several months with local girl Amy Sanbo, Bruce, aged 23, decided to propose in the summer of 63, but was turned down. Dejected, 
he returned to Hong Kong with friend Doug Palmer to visit his family and to benefit from a few months of rest and relaxation before recommencing his studies. The remainder of 63 was to prove to be a significant time in the life of Bruce Lee. Not only did he open his first Junfang Kung Fu Institute, where he would fly in the face of tradition by teaching his direct, effective and street realistic principles of self-defense to any person of any race, but he also embarked on a relationship with a certain Linda Emery. Bruce's first date with Linda was on October the 25th at the Space Needle restaurant in Seattle, and the two quickly fell in love and would eventually marry. Encouraged by Linda, Bruce moved his Junfang Kung Fu Institute to 4750 University Way near the university campus and benefited greatly from a major influx of students who became interested in his teachings and principles of self-defense. In 1964, aged 24, Bruce met Jun Ri, the man considered by many to be the father of Taekwondo in America. The two men would go on to develop a lifelong friendship based on their respect for each other's abilities and Re subsequently invited Bruce to appear at tournaments in Washington and other locations throughout the United States to demonstrate his breathtaking skills. Due to his success with the school in Washington and his growing profile within the United States as a renowned master of the martial arts, Bruce opened a second Junfang Kung Fu school in Oakland and his good friend and student Taki Kimura took over the responsibility as head instructor. On August the 2nd, 1964, Bruce performed at the International Karate Championships in Long Beach, California, at the invitation of Kenpo legend Ed Parker. Bruce mesmerized the audience with his feats of superhuman ability, including the performance of a series of two-finger push-ups and the incredible one-inch punch. The one-inch punch was a technique that Bruce developed with student James DeMille, which effectively allowed him to position his fist one inch away from the torso of an opponent, and with a short, focused strike, propel him backwards several feet through the air, seemingly without effort. Present at the groundbreaking demonstration was Jay Sebring, hairstylist for the popular Batman TV series starring Adam West and Burt Ward. Sebring was so impressed with Bruce's physical prowess and magnetic charisma that he immediately put him in touch with Batman producer William Dozier, who invited Bruce to LA to take part in a screen test for his forthcoming TV series, The Green Hornet. After a passionate whirlwind romance lasting less than a year, Bruce proposed to Linda, and the couple married on August 17, 1964, and moved to Oakland, California. Encouraged by his new wife, Bruce continued to teach all comers at his new school in Oakland, angering the elders of the local Chinatown community, who deeply resented his insistence on teaching the secrets of Chinese martial arts to Caucasian students. Consequently, the elders nominated Wong Jack Man, a local Kung Fu expert, to challenge Bruce to a contest. For both fighters, the stakes were high. If Bruce lost, he would have been duty-bound to either close his school or stop teaching Kung Fu to Westerners. If Wong lost, he would have been similarly bound to stop teaching indefinitely. When the time for the fight came around, Wong, intimidated by Bruce's fearsome reputation, tried to delay the match and then to impose restrictions on the techniques that could be used. Bruce was furious and insisted that the fight be a no-holds-barred contest. When the match finally took place, Bruce defeated his opponent quickly and easily, using his refined Wing Chun technique. Despite his ease of victory, Bruce was still concerned that he took too long to defeat his opponent and began to re-evaluate his style. Through this redevelopment process, the early concepts of Jeet Kune Do, also known as the way of the intercepting fist, began to form. JKD would eventually develop into the most efficient unarmed combat system ever devised by one man and would utilize the most efficient fighting techniques from such diverse arts as Wing Chun, Thai boxing, Judo, Japanese karate and Western boxing. Bruce's key principle for his new system was a style without style 
an ideology and physical training regime which conditioned the mind and body to respond instinctively to any given attack, without reliance on set patterns or movements. During early 65, William Dozier successfully raised finance for the Hornet project, and Bruce was signed to a one-year option as Cato in the resultant TV series. He was paid an 1800 US dollar retainer, a small fortune at the time, and fulfilled his lifetime ambition to appear on TV at the tender age of 24. On February the 1st, 1965, Linda gave birth to their first child, Brandon Bruce Lee. Bruce was delighted at the prospect of fatherhood and developed a close bond with his young son, which lasted throughout his lifetime. Tragically, only seven days later, Bruce received news from Hong Kong that his father had passed away. Grief-stricken, Bruce flew alone to Hong Kong to attend his father's funeral, before using his advance from producer Dozier to fly himself, Linda and Brandon back to Hong Kong to settle the affairs of his father's estate. After spending time with his grieving mother, Bruce returned to the United States in September of 65, residing in Seattle before relocating with his family to an exclusive apartment on Wiltshire and Gailey in Westwood, Los Angeles. During early 1966, Bruce finally began work as Cato in the Green Hornet TV series, earning 400 US dollars per show over 26 episodes, with a two-part guest slot added into the Batman show. While living in Los Angeles, Bruce, with the help of Dan Innocento, opened his third Junfang Kung Fu school at 628 College Street, Los Angeles, where the final formulation of Bruce Lee's philosophy of the martial art, Jeet Kune Do, blossomed. The last episode of The Green Hornet aired on July 14, 1967, before being cancelled by the network. The ratings had dropped considerably since the first episode, and by all accounts, Bruce was more popular with viewers in his supporting role than leading man Van Williams. Disappointed by this temporary setback, Bruce continued to build a portfolio of television work with appearances in Ironside alongside Raymond Burr. Here Come the Brides, Blondie, The Milton Burl Show, and Long Street opposite James Franciscus, where he appeared as Lee Chung in four episodes. In one episode of Long Street, entitled The Way of the Intercepting Fist, Bruce is given the opportunity by screenwriter friend and student Sterling Siliphant to explain on film for the first time the fundamental philosophical principles behind his amazing fighting art. Bruce Lee's first Hollywood movie role was as Winslow Wong, opposite James Garner in the 1968 film Marlowe. Despite extensive location scouting in India, a planned co-project with Hollywood students Steve McQueen, James Coburn and Sterling Siliphant, entitled The Silent Flute, was abandoned due to the lack of a coherent script. Bruce also suffered further disappointment when he was rejected by producer Fred Weintraub for the lead role in Kung Fu Western The Warrior, a concept later developed into the Kung Fu TV series starring David Carradine. Understandably, Bruce was at an all-time low at this time. But on April the 19th, 1969, his second child, Shannon Lee, was born in Santa Monica. Linda Lee would say that Bruce felt that an angel had come to stay at our house. Bitterly disappointed with Hollywood, Bruce visited Hong Kong with his son Brandon in 1970 and was enthusiastically greeted by the local media community as the star of The Green Hornet. After a stunning appearance on a local TV show where Bruce performed a demo of his art, breaking four consecutively placed boards and one hanging in the air, he was courted by local film and TV producers. After rejecting an offer from Run Run Shaw at the legendary Shaw Brothers Studios to sign a seven-year contract on a salary of $2,000 per film, Bruce accepted a part from fledgling producer Raymond Chow to star in his new project, The Big Boss, due to start production in Thailand. This first Hong Kong-produced Bruce Lee film was a massive hit and outgrossed the sound of music, taking more than 3.5 million US dollars in its first three weeks of release. 
Bruce became a star literally overnight. Captivating audiences with his magnetic charisma, brutal physicality, and a level of martial artistry which was light years ahead of any other screen star working in the business at the time. After the amazing success of Boss, Bruce was given a larger salary, a bigger budget, and more directorial control for his next project, Fist of Fury, which went into production in 1971. In what many enthusiasts consider to be the ultimate martial arts movie, Bruce plays the fictional character of Chen Chun, a student of legendary real-life martial artist Fok Yung Gap. In an emotive roller coaster storyline of friendship, betrayal, revenge, and deadly confrontation, Lee is a true force of nature. He battles against Japanese imperialist forces determined to subjugate his people and close down his school. In each of the incredible fight scenes, Lee's execution of technique is exemplary. Whether fighting unarmed or with the weapon that would become synonymous with his image, the deadly nunchaku. As a painful side note, Bruce's techniques were so powerful that student Bob Baker received a serious chest injury during the filming of his climactic encounter with Bruce, despite wearing a protective shield under his shirt. Fist literally took Asia by storm, and Bruce became a megastar in Hong Kong, unable to walk the streets of Kowloon for fear of being mobbed by hordes of adoring fans. For his next production, Way of the Dragon, which also heralded his directorial debut, Bruce formed his own production company, Concord, with co-partner Raymond Chow. Predictably, Way of the Dragon smashed the box office record previously set by Fist of Fury, and public demand for the movie was so high that the police had to reroute traffic away from theatres during screenings. To give Way a truly international feel, Bruce shot on location in Rome, using the Italian capital's stunning landmarks to frame the action. In addition, rather than using the Hong Kong fighters so familiar to local audiences, Bruce enlisted the services of friend and karate legend Chuck Norris to appear as his nemesis in the deadly climactic confrontation set in Rome's ancient Colosseum. This incredible one-on-one -on -one encounter stands even to this day as one of the most skillful and realistic fight scenes ever committed to celluloid and is a lasting tribute to the outstanding abilities of both men. Way of the Dragon also allowed Bruce to take the application of his trademark weapon, the Nunchaku, even further than in Fist of Fury. In an amazing scene at the back of the restaurant, Lee dispatches his attackers using not one, but two sets simultaneously. Using a concept first conceived during location scouting for the silent flute in India, Bruce began work on the Game of Death in August 1972. The premise of the movie is of three fighters fighting their way up a multi-floored pagoda. To pass from one floor to the next, each fighter must defeat a master of a particular style. During the progression of the battle, two of the fighters, played by James Tien and Che Yuan, are defeated and killed due to their rigid adherence to one particular style of combat and their inability to adapt to the differing challenges presented on each floor. The ultimate warrior, played by Lee, a fluid fighter unrestricted by an adherence to any one particular style, would, on the other hand, successfully defeat each subsequent master before gaining enlightenment after victory on the floor of the unknown. Tragically, after filming a number of electric scenes with Eskrima expert and senior Jeet Kune Do instructor Dan Inosanto, Hapkido master Ji Han Joy, and 7'6 basketball sensation Abdul Karim Jabbar, Bruce was never to complete the project due to his untimely death. The 15 minutes or so of footage which survived proved that Game of Death could have been Lee's finest work. An explosive nunchaku battle with Dan Inosanto and the remarkable David and Goliath confrontation between Bruce and Jabbar are both years ahead of their time. While working on The Game of Death, Bruce was offered a Hollywood contract with Warner Brothers to make Enter the Dragon. Bruce signed and made the most successful martial arts movie of all time. 
The choreography on display is inspired. The cavern fight scene in particular, where Lee takes on scores of attackers single-handedly with bare fists and feet, a bow staff, double sticks and his trusty nunchaku, is an ensemble sequence which still ranks as one of the most accomplished ever filmed, even 33 years after the movie's original release. Bruce's lightning hand strikes against chief protagonist Bob Wall were reportedly so fast during principal photography that the camera speed had to be adjusted before they could be successfully caught on film. Shortly before the release of Enter the Dragon, the film that would finally make Bruce a star in the eyes of the Western world, he tragically succumbed to a brain aneurysm on Friday the 20th of July, 1973, aged 32. His death allegedly was the result of a reaction to meprobabate, contained in a tablet for headaches called equagesic. Bruce died in the Queen Elizabeth Hospital in Hong Kong. He received a national funeral in Hong Kong, viewed by tens of thousands of mourners. Bruce was also given a private burial before Linda and the children, plus close relatives and friends, including Steve McQueen and James Coburn at Lakeview Cemetery in Seattle on July 31st, 1973. Five years after Bruce's death, Golden Harvest Chief Executive Raymond Chow finally released Game of Death. Using Enter the Dragon director Robert Klaus, a number of stand-ins and the formidable expertise of Hong Kong actor, director and fight choreographer Sammo Hung, Chow created a framework in which to showcase the final, unseen work of Bruce Lee. Upon its release in 1978, fans marveled at the intricate fight choreography and physical expertise on display in each of the three remarkable fight scenes. Today, Bruce Lee is still a world icon and an inspiration to all seeking the answers to life's problems and the search for ultimate knowledge that is self-knowledge.